sleep factors that are involved or things that affect your sleep that are actually creating a system by which your sleep is actually first disturbed and then your bladder is like, oh yeah, remember me? We need to pee. Is your bladder getting in the way of your sleep? Like, are you waking up two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 times a night? I hope no one's waking up 10 times a night. I mean, come on. But anyway, is that a problem for you? If so, this video is for you. I'm going to share with you ways you can help yourself tonight. Nocturia is defined as two or more trips to the bathroom to urinate during sleep, okay? And this affects literally millions and millions of us. It is more common as we get older, but it can affect us at any age. The problem with getting up at night to urinate is that it disrupts our sleep and sleep is essential, okay? But here's the thing. Nocturia is almost always multifactorial, or meaning there's multiple factors that are involved. It's not as simple as a naughty bladder most of the time. There's usually significant sleep factors that are involved or things that affect your sleep that are actually creating a system by which your sleep is actually first disturbed and then your bladder is like, oh yeah, remember me? I'll make you remember me. We need to pee. So here's what normally happens. Our bladder fills up quietly throughout the day, throughout the night. As it's filling up, we usually are not aware of this process until it gets to capacity and full enough that it gives us an urge to urinate. When we sleep, we're supposed to produce less urine overall than when we are awake. Our bladder is more muted, as I like to call it. And so that, that allows us to go longer stretches without peeing the need to pee. This process is best when we are in deep REM sleep. When we are not in that deep REM sleep, then the muting of that bladder, if you will, is essentially gone. And so we are more attuned to signals our bladder is giving us as if we are fully awake. Meaning if you're kind of sleep, but not really sleep, then you're going to feel your bladder be full and that capacity faster than somebody who's in deep, deep sleep. In that instance, it's more your sleep needs to be better than your bladder needs to behave better. Okay. Well, what are things that affect your sleep? Tons of things affect our sleep. First of all, a lot of us have pretty poor sleep hygiene. That means we may fall asleep to the TV. We may have our phone and be scrolling, looking at Dr. Milhouse on Instagram and your favorite urologist on TikTok when we should be putting that phone down an hour before we try to go to sleep so our mind isn't engaged. Maybe we just watched the news before we went to bed and that's engaging our mind and stimulating it. A lot of us have sleep problems, just insomnia, difficulty falling asleep, difficulty staying asleep. A lot of us have pets in the room that wake us up or we have spouses or partners that toss and turn or snore. We have distractions all over the place. We might sleep to the lights on when we really should sleep in dark rooms. And there are medical problems that are notorious for interfering with sleep. One of them is sleep apnea. Sleep apnea is where you snore, but actually intermittently obstruct your airway as you sleep. Why is a urologist talking about sleep apnea? Well, because it is a common cause of frequent urination at night. See, with sleep apnea, your body actually produces more urine at night. And so you're making more urine, you're getting less quality sleep, so worse sleep quality overall, and you are gonna pee more at night. And in fact, treating your sleep apnea can have dramatic improvements to you not having to wake up to pee in the middle of the night. But even if you don't have sleep apnea, evaluate your sleep hygiene, okay? Is it dark when you go to sleep? Do you eliminate distractions? Get that dog out of your bed, all right? Maybe tell the snore to get that snoring treated. 
or do what I love, and I think everybody should get one of these, is get a sound machine. Sound machine is something that makes some sort of like conducive sound. It's not an interrupting sound, a conducive sound for sleeping. FYI, I am not like being paid by this company, but I love my Dome sound machine. D-O-H-M sound machine, I love it. It makes this white noise almost like a fan. Oh God, if you guys have ever slept to a fan, it's like some of the best sleep ever, okay? You just like put in a trance. And like, anybody agree that silence is actually loud when you're sleeping? Yeah, so like the silence and the creaking of like your room or your house or your apartment and like every little nature chirping outside your window, that, that is loud. The dome kind of like quiets all of that and makes this just mesmerizing in trance fan sound that is very soothing. I can't sleep without it. But you don't even have to get a dome. You can, there's sound machine apps, whatever. But something that is conducive to eliminating distractions. Also, don't stimulate your brain right before you hit the sheets. Don't watch the nightly news right before you go to bed. Not a good idea. The news is often triggering these days. And even if it isn't, it's stimulating yourself on a story when you should be sleeping. I know you love my page. I know you love following me, but don't be scrolling on your phone right before you go to bed. Try to put the phone down 30 minutes to an hour before you plan to go to sleep to kind of unwind for the day. Plan to go to sleep at the same time just about every day. A healthy pattern and regulated pattern of sleep helps your body's own biological systems understand that it's time to sleep, therefore we need to adjust these biological processes. Versus if you sleep at random times every day, your body don't know what's up and what's down. When we waking up, when we go to bed, it is kind of like haphazard, okay? And also, which makes the most sense, avoid liquids at least two hours prior to bed. Now, that doesn't mean if you really are thirsty or you have to take a medication at night before you sleep that you can't like have anything, but try to limit that to just a sip and have the majority of your hydration occur in the early parts of the day or the early hours while you're awake and going to the bathroom isn't as annoying. And then start to back off and certainly avoid within two hours of bedtime. And as always, don't be afraid to go get checked out by your doctor and make sure there aren't any other conditions that may be predisposing you frequency at night. Go see your local urologist. I hope you learned something. Let me know in the comments. Let me know if this helped you. Go ahead, hit that like button, subscribe, and join me next Wednesday for more. Thank you.